Hey everyone, it's Caleb. Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about pointers in C++. And this is pretty much going to apply to C as well. So if you're brand new to this subject, it can be a little bit complicated. So make sure you pay attention and I'll try to give you some good tips along the way. Or should I say pointers? <laughs> Anyways, check out our sponsor. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So first thing, before we write anything and try to understand the concept, you should know that this is going to be a purely conceptual video and then we're going to follow up with the hands-on content. Also, I really recommend you first study references. So we did some videos on references and the rule is something like use references when you can and then what's it what's the phrase use pointers if you have to or something like that basically when you're in doubt go for references and if for some reason you can't do what you're trying to do with references but you can do it with a pointer then you should consider pointers don't just jump in and be like, oh yeah, I'm in C++, I gotta use pointers, you know, it's gonna make me cool and get jobs. No, it doesn't really work that way. In fact, pointers are usually uh, avoided unless they are necessary. So figure out references and then we'll talk about some of the differences between references and, and, and pointers in this video and some of the upcoming content. All right, so we got that on the chalkboard. References first. Next up, let's just talk about the absolute basics, how to create a pointer, what it actually even is, why you might want to use one, and all of those things. So very first thing, let's talk about creating a variable inside of C++. You say something like, let's go with int x has the value five. Hey, we just created a variable, pretty simple. You should probably know how to do this. Um, so right now we have this variable x and it is of type int. So what exactly does that mean? Well, it means we have an area in memory that contains the value five and we can refer to it with the identifier X. But this isn't the only thing in memory. Obviously there's all kinds of variables in memory and all of your programs run in memory. So you need a way to basically say where this is located in memory. When you're programming, you don't have to worry about this when you're just working with X, all that's gonna happen for you. However, if you want a little bit more uh, control or visibility, that's where pointers come in. So we can actually point to this memory address using a pointer. All right, so <laughs> before we talk about how to create the pointer, let's talk about a really useful operator. And that is the address of operator. It's kind of a weird name. So address of operator. Dude, I don't, I can never remember if it's OR or ER. So this is a unary operator. What that means is it works on one operand. So you just attach it to one thing and it can be the variable you're working with. So basically when you read this, you, you would say address of X. What does that mean? Well, it's actually going to get the memory address and it's going to probably be like 12 hexadecimal digits. I don't know why it, people say that because like digits, implies base 10, but hexadecimal is like base 16. So hexadecimal numbers. So you're gonna probably have 12 of those. So it might look something like this. I'm just making this up. So these numbers aren't significant. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And basically this is hexadecimal. So this would coordinate to 48 bits in memory but you don't really have to worry about that. Basically, the point is you can use this address of operator to get the location of this data right here. And you don't just want to print that out. I mean, you can, you could just, you know, say C out like so. You could output that to the console, 
but you, you might wanna save that and use it later in your code. And that, my friends, is where the pointer comes in. So we can assign this to a variable and use it later. So what in the world is that gonna look like? Well, it's gonna look like this. We are going to say int, and then to say that this is a pointer, you use the asterisk and then give it a name. So for example, y, and then you assign it the address of x in this case. So this is the syntax to create a pointer of type int. So it's not an integer, it's an integer pointer. These are two separate types in C++. So int pointer is not the same thing as int. Sorry, I hesitated there because I'm doing like the math notation. So this is not the same thing as an int. And if you try to use them interchangeably, you're gonna get type errors, things aren't gonna compile, or your code's just gonna not work the way you would expect. So just be aware, these are two separate types. When you need a pointer, you're gonna use y. When you need an integer, you will want to use x, or you can actually get the data that y points to, and that's what we're gonna talk about now. And again, this is kind of one of those things where it's like a lot of information. So you might need to watch this a couple times or do a little extra research. I'm trying to give it all in a fluid way. However, it's kind of like this thing where it's like, oh, you also need to know about this and this and this, and then everything kind of pieces together. So let's just talk about what this actually looks like right now. We got this place in memory and it contains the value five and we refer to it as X. Now we introduced this new variable and it is called y. And this is a pointer, so instead of containing the data here, it points to this location in memory. This is very similar to how references work, so that's why there's a lot of confusion on when to use which. So if you want to get the integer data, you can do it now two ways. You can use x, that's going to give you the value five, or you can actually tell the computer to get the data wherever y points. And the way you do that is with the asterisk. So you would say asterisk y. It's a terrible asterisk, I'm so sorry guys. Something like that. So asterisk y, that is also going to give you the value five. So if you were to compare these, x, being equal to asterisk of y, this should evaluate to true. Now I've been saying asterisk y, but that's not the official technical term of this. This is called the dereferencing operator. So we are dereferencing y to get the value that it points at. Now we're working with an integer. So just to repeat that, y is a pointer dereferencing y gives us an integer. Integer pointer, integer. Integer pointer, integer. Say it with me, guys. No, I'm not gonna make you do that. <laughs> All right, so this is where like I got the most confused when I first learned about pointers and C programming. Ugh, C programming, Ugh, disgusting. So you define the pointer using the asterisk. Okay, you got that so far? you can dereference the pointer using the asterisk. But these do not have the exact same meaning. This is saying, hey, we are creating a pointer. This is saying, hey, get the value wherever that pointer points to. But you don't have to use that asterisk whenever you're working with that pointer. You just use y by itself. So if I asked you, hey, could you write out the pointer you just created, you would say y. And it's confusing because when you define it, you use the asterisk, but then you don't ever use the asterisk again until you want to dereference it. So asterisk to create the pointer, you use y by itself whenever you're talking about the pointer variable, and then asterisk y to get the data where the pointer points to. It's crazy. All right, why? Why would you wanna do any of this stuff? Well, again, use references first because you can do a lot of this stuff with references. However, let's just for a second assume you had to use pointers. Maybe you're using C programming or 
you're in school and they're making you use pointers for some reason. Well, in that situation, you can basically create two ways of working with the same data. To draw what I just had, this contained the value five, and you can refer to this data with X or by dereferencing the Y pointer. So now you have two ways to refer to the same location in memory. So that's the first reason you might wanna do this. If you need multiple variables to talk about the same area of memory, you can use pointers. This is commonly used for functions and passing data. So if I create some function, and you know it has a parameter in there, we'll just call it data. Well, if you pass in x, by default, that x gets copied, the data of x gets copied into this data parameter. Well, if you're using pointers, you can actually have them refer to the same area of memory. So if instead you passed in y, and the function took a pointer, well then now the address is gonna be copied into data and Y is gonna to point to the same area of memory and data is going to point to the same area of memory. So what's the point? Now inside of this function, this function can change that data. So you know we could assign it the value 10 and it's going to change that specific area of memory so that change is going to be seen everywhere not just within that function. So basically we can use pointers to allow us to change data that's defined outside of the function. We can change the argument variables that are passed into the parameters. And we'll see that more hands-on in the upcoming videos. Don't worry about all the syntax right now, just understand the concept that it allows our functions to change data that's passed in and it's going to persist beyond that function call. You might see this for a swap function. So you could create a swap function to actually swap two variables. This is actually kind of hard to do in some other programming languages that don't have pointers or references. But in C++, it's really easy to do. You can do them with both pointers and references because you can think of it like so. If we have some function swap and it takes an input A and an input B and it swaps the data well, in order for that change to be seen over here, <laughs> it kind of looks like a smiley face or like the Amazon logo. In order for those changes to be seen after the function call, that data that's passed in needs to be able to be changed. And again, that can be done with pointers and references. So any times you're working with dynamic memory where you have to allocate memory yourself, you're going to be using pointers. So in C++, when you see the new keyword, that is dynamic memory allocation and it's going to return a pointer. And you use that pointer to refer to that area of memory. Don't do this unless you have to. And if you do have to do dynamic memory, there's smart pointers which will kind of abstract away the memory management aspect of this. So you can study into smart pointers and the different types. Inside of other programming languages, you know, C Sharp, Java, you will see the new keyword quite often. In C++, you don't wanna use the new keyword unless you absolutely have to. In fact, when you create an object in C++, by default, you don't wanna use the new keyword. So if you're creating a user object, it's just gonna look like this. user u. You. You're not going to do something like this. This is what you would see in Java as an example, but in C++, this new keyword here is going to put this data on the heap memory, and you're going to have to later free this memory, and you're gonna have to worry about that. So don't do that unless you absolutely have to for some reason, such as if you need this to extend beyond the scope it's defined in. But we're like really getting into the weeds here, so. Let's not worry about that right now. So I think that's going to conclude my introduction to pointers. Check out the next video because we're going to get hands on with it. And if you're looking for a little bit of extra study, I suggest you look up differences between references and pointers. So we talked about references, we talked about pointers. Now you just need to figure out when you want to use which. 
And again, just to repeat myself for like the fifth time, use references unless you absolutely have to use a pointer for something. But most of the time, that's not gonna be necessary. For example, I did a 10 hour C++ series here on YouTube and everyone was so upset because I didn't get into pointers. It's because I had absolutely no need for the pointers in the introductory course. Yeah, maybe you should have taught them just for practice, but everyone jumps into C++ wanting to use pointers but you don't actually need to use pointers for all that much. So stick to references unless you have to use pointers. Thank you guys, please be sure to subscribe. Smash that sub button, slap it. All right, I'm, uh, I'm tired of talking about pointers, so bye. <laughs>